through all the uh, virtual stuff that we had at the beginning one by one and and then I'm gonna uh, uh, get to the point and explain uh, more about virtuality so um, we started with uh, um, we started with to to teach uh, um, inheritance we started with oh wrong one with an animal class and we said an animal class of mine ours is a, is a class an animal is a thing that uh, uh, creates uh, uh, creates something that has a name and um, it uh, uh, it can set the name it can get the name it it acts and moves and makes a sound we created some constructors and stuff to see how they actually react when we uh, create and uh, not create it we, uh, we create and, uh, and and destroy it um, to see how the process happens that was not related to uh, inheritance but I just did it for you to kind of do practice on it then we talked about uh, how we can make a uh, regular file scope variable global using an extern so we have we have in our animal.cpp a debug file scope variable that is um, that decides if the debugging fun uh, um, messages are being printed or not but this because it's a file variable it only ac accessible to to uh, the animal module so what we did to make it available to whoever uses animal I am introducing the debug file scope variable by extern to others so in this case when main actually includes animal then debug is accessible to it because it's the, it's, it's in namespace SDDS uh, are we okay down to this point And then what we have done over here for the next part, uh, we went uh, further and we said to inherit an animal into a cat. To inherit an animal into a cat, we needed to learn what the syntax of inheritance is. And the syntax of inheritance was as follows. We said we can create a cat out of an animal. Animal is a good old animal that we had. It doesn't have construct, copy, construct, and copy assignment because that's not what we are teaching. But um, yeah, so what it has over here it, that is different with the animal that we had, it has some uh, properties that are now signed as protected. So we learned that we have a new type of access modifier. We have something that tells us if these objects are accessible by children or not obviously anything that is protected inside the class is completely unaccessible for outsiders but protected variables uh, sorry properties which means either um, functions methods or attributes they are all uh, ac accessible to children so we said the syntax of creating a cat was out of animal is to, is to put the name of the class and they public the base class so essentially now it says cat is an animal that has number of lives and the properties of the cat has a, it is a has a relationship uh, where the uh, um, uh, the inheritance section of the code it says that cat is an animal are we okay down to this point okay now that we have this let's take a look at what happens with the constructor when we are looking at the constructor of a derived class we'll see that it receives the values that it needs to set the animal part as you see cat doesn't have a name why because its animal part has one it doesn't need to carry it therefore it receives the value for it and it receives the value to initialize its own stuff in the implementation of the cat to be able to actually invoke and request the the uh, the 
animal part to be initialized we can actually in the initialization area which is right between the close curly close parentheses of the constructor and open curly bracket of the body of the constructor as we used to be able to initialize the attributes we can actually initialize the uh, base classes too so I'm passing the name to the animal and I'm initializing number of lies to here and therefore my uh, uh, cat uh, uh, will pass the name to the animal and animal will set the name and everything and because the name of the animal over here is protected a cat's name can be actually uh, queried from the class obviously in here I override I have overwritten the the action and the sound but I did not override the move so it and this this action is called override that shadows the animal's action it's not overload it is override if action over here had a, an argument that wasn't a match to the parents act then it was an overload then it would have overloaded the parents action but it doesn't have because it doesn't have that one it overrides and shadows the animals action any action that is not overwritten will cause the cat to actually call the uh, the, uh, the 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 base method and that's uh, that's how it happens <coughs> uh, <coughs> yeah and the destructor of the animal is same so everything goes <coughs> perfectly good uh, in here I also introduced how we can actually globalize instances of classes and I said my utility in here is different with what we had before the utility that I have over here has several private uh, has several public methods I don't have standalone methods anymore they all belong to the class utils but because I don't want people to keep uh, instantiating my utils to be able to use it inside utils.c exactly like animal that I had a debug I create a variable which means an instance of utils as a file scope so ut has a file scope over here and then I will make that instance globalized to everyone so any part of my application that wants to use if they actually add the the utils to their um, to their uh, um, add uh, include utils.h to the code they can actually use the ut objects which is in this case the string copy that we had uh, and that was how to create a global object and I mentioned that c in and c out are in fact globalized like this are we okay with this perfect after talking about all these things we said that um, although this is all fine and dandy we have no problem with having all these things over here but what happens if you actually call or use a child using its parents reference and we said uh, we call that what happens if I call someone with their last name and we said that that will cause the the child to vanish because C++ tends to see the closest thing that you have to the reference which means in your main if you create an animal pointer that is pointing to a cat and try to actually call the actions of the cat using the animal pointer it will not even see the act move and sound of the cat and it will simply call everything from the animals so essentially referring or pointing to a child using the, their bases pointer or reference or the parents pointer or reference will re completely lose all the improvements that have been done in the derived class do we understand this all right while that may be desirable for certain scenarios that you would say okay I want to improve the, the actions of my base class but uh, and if I and and I will 
make sure that I will not point the child with his parents reference or pointer when do, doing something like that you actually uh, uh, if it if it actually desirable and that's your business logic you're fine but sometimes you want an improvement to be final which means when you actually improve an action of a base class you want to make sure that improvement is final and no matter how you call that object using its parents pointer reference or its own you always want the latest version of that thing to be called we call those things virtual functions so essentially anything that is tagged as virtual any function that is tagged that uh, as virtual it makes sure that the latest version of the function or the action will be called and that guarantees uh, if this guarantees that act so if I actually go to main in here and I see uh, an animal pointer is calling the action of uh, the uh, of the animal if animals action is virtual and only if it is virtual the latest version of it will be called so if <coughs> animal actually implements the action then it will be called if it implements the move then it will be called if it doesn't obviously because it doesn't exist it means no new version is, is there nothing will happen play with this code remove the function see how it's going to react so virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a function is called but we have to always bear in mind that the latest version must exist to be called which means if I have a base class, if I have one class and it has series of virtual functions and nothing is inherited for it, that virtuality means nothing. Or if I have a base class and a derived class and certain virtual function is not improved, it doesn't, it, it, it was not overridden in the uh, child's class, then it will not be called because it's not improved. Another thing we need to make sure that we always do is the fact that you must always make your destructors virtual. That guarantees that if at any moment or time your object, your class is inherited into a new class, it is impossible for a memory leak to happen because of allocation and deallocation using the pa parent's pointer. Because you may are making the, vir the destructor virtual, when you delete a child using the parent's pointer, it says run the latest destructor first, which means the destructor of child, therefore everything gets destroyed backwards. Are we okay down to this point? And this, ladies and gentlemen, brings us back to brings us to uh, another concept that I need to talk to you about. And I, we mentioned this actually in uh, the class, I believe, the last time that we talked. Did we? I'm not quite sure, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to explain it to you, and I want you to listen to me carefully on this. Um, we mentioned in class that there are certain actions that uh, there are certain actions that we want a class to have but we don't know what it is yet and the example for it I don't know did I talk about uh, languages in uh, in class languages of human beings did I talk about that Also, we did talk about it. Good. So that's if that's the case, then yeah. So now that we know that there are certain things that are basically, uh, um, you know that the object is supposed to do it, but you still don't know how. And for that, we still have virtual functions. So we can actually call those type of uh, actions virtual actions. But 
they are not only virtual they are pure virtual which means they're just an idea if I say a human being can talk talking of a human being is an action that is supposed to take place but I or speak let's say a human speak human being speaks if I want to tell the human being to speak that action can only be taken if I know what type of language the person is speaking to and it be it is based on its nationality tribe where they live so I cannot tell a human being I cannot implement the speaking of a human being I need to wait for a human being to be inherited to a human being of nationality of whatever country with a specific spoken language and then I can actually ask it to speak for these type of things I have to make those type of functions pure virtual how do we create a pure virtual function it's very simple what you do you think of an object uh, you think of an action that the object is supposed to do but you still don't know what for example we don't know how an animal will make a sound depending on what is the animal the sound it's making will be different therefore I'm gonna say the sound function of an animal is not only virtual but it's pure by setting it to zero that sound will not have any implementation in the code for animals so there is no sound function in implementation you are literally saying animal is an incomplete class it's an abstract base class that should have a sound function but I don't know what it is so now if I want to have a cat I'm gonna say a cat is an animal and it actually knows how to make a sound so when I'm actually implementing that I'm gonna go to the cat and I'm gonna say it's gonna say meow and when I actually create a dog out of it, a dog can make a sound too, and the dog's going to say woof. So what happens over here is this. If I have an animal pointer pointing to, if I have an animal pointer pointing to a cat or a dog or whatever, when I ask for the animal to make a sound, although it's an animal pointer, pointer it's going to pick the proper action that is the latest version of it but so if I actually run this program now oh it's, nothing's gonna happen I have to run this program now my apologies set a startup project yeah so when I actually run this program now what happens is that the program runs and gets executed and based on who is making the sound we're gonna have a mew and a mew and a woof woof and a mew and a woof woof so depending on who is making the sound automatically that one is going to be made I say animal make a sound if that animal is a cat it's gonna say meow if the animal is a dog it's gonna say wolf I'm not writing an if statement I'm just saying make a sound this is ladies and gentlemen ultimate polymorphism when you look at it there is no overloading there is nothing the compiler the, the language by default and automatically selects the proper action based on the type of the object and that's uh, polymorphism okay and obviously when I'm deleting the deleting action is polymorph too when I'm saying delete the animal if it's a cat a cat's gonna die if it's a dog a dog's gonna die and Hence, that's going to be the case. And the, the biggest side effect of a uh, pure virtual function is that it makes the base class abstract, which means if I try to compile and run this thing, it's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? The animal cannot, have an, cannot instantiate an abstract class. This class is not a real class. It has unfinished work. I cannot instantiate it. Are we okay with this? So this is what we call uh, uh, an abstract base class and a pure virtual function. 
but sometimes when you are creating classes all that you have is an idea you do not have any type of implementation available for the thing that you are creating so when I actually create an animal I could say I know an animal can act I know an animal can make a sound I know how it can move but I have no idea which one is what it all depends what type of an animal I'm gonna have when all you have is an idea what we call this thing is an interface so if all the methods are pure virtual then we call this type of abstract base class an interface in C++ there is absolutely no difference between an abstract base class and an interface one pure virtual function or all of it pure virtual function for C++ is the same it says I cannot instantiate it until you implement them okay but in object orientation terminology they say a class that is only an idea only has pure virtuals methods in it it's called an uh, interface obviously all interfaces that you create it's always a good idea to create an empty destructor in it and as you see a destructor cannot be pure virtual it has to exist so you just make it empty you create a virtual destructor that is empty are we okay with this so now I have a, an interface called animal out of that interface I'm creating a pet in my pet I am only implementing the move and the sound I wrote over here virtual but it doesn't matter anything that is virtual in animal it's gonna be virtual till the end so you write virtual or don't write virtual it doesn't make any difference uh, the functions of it will all be virtual but, but do it by doing something like this I implemented the move and the sound but I did not implement it, the act function because of that fact the pet is still an abstract base class although some of the stuff are implemented but not all of them therefore pet is still an abstract base class and you cannot instantiate it now, do we understand this perfect so in order to make a class what we call concrete which means a class that is not uh, abstract and it has everything set up you need to implement everything that the class has because cat is a child of pet and pet already improved uh, already implemented move um, uh, my pet class is a, a, my, my cat class is a concrete class and I can actually instantiate and use it and uh, uh, that's how it works so now if I actually write it like this you will see that uh, I cannot create a pet I cannot create an animal but the rest I can and I can keep a cat in an animal pointer or in a pet pointer they're all the same they are the parents they are both parents and grandparent of cat therefore cat can be referred as an animal or a pet with absolutely no problem are we okay with this all right I'm just gonna write make sure I didn't put any errors in here so you can walk through it and see how it works please walk through these things very important to go through it and try to understand how they work actually you know what that's enough okay I'm not gonna go further in this so uh, you know everything that you need to know up to, up to the end of this week so the next day you are coming in I'm gonna go in detail through all these things and teach a little bit from the uh, stuff that we have from next semester next <laughs> next week so we are to date and uh, we are up to date and uh, 
and uh, if there is uh, not any question we can call it a day anybody have any question any question anyone so let me actually do it like this so people don't say yes I'm gonna say any questions all right thank you very much so I'm gonna save this and call it a day I'll see you hopefully I'm, I'll feel better on uh, on Wednesday and we can actually um, uh, be more energetic than this my head is actually killing me so anyways um, I'll see you guys uh, on Wednesday and uh, let me know if you have any trouble on Microsoft Teams have a beautiful day everyone take care